Yesterday, Foreign Affairs Minister David Emerson met with Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai at a conference of donor countries currently providing aid to Afghanistan. The conference in Paris, where the meeting took place, brought pledges of about $20 billion from 68 countries. Canada pledged a further $600 million. Earlier this week, Emerson told reporters in Ottawa that the new investments would be focused on reconstruction, including three signature projects, refurbishing a dam, building 50 schools, and immunizing 7 million children against polio. Well, these projects will be completed by 2011, and yes, you're right, that is the end date for Canada's mission in Afghanistan. However, this week, delegates in Paris, as well as the Senate Defense Committee members here in Ottawa, questioned whether Canada really would or should pull its troops out by then. Almas Balwar Zakiwal is with the Senlis Council, and he joins Wasau in the studio to evaluate these new commitments. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you for coming for in. Me. Let me ask you first, the, this prison break in uh, Kandahar sounds very complicated. Uh, trucks, people firing uh, motorcycle, coming up on motorcycles, firing rockets, suicide bombers, walking up. Uh, what is your reaction to this? Is it uh, to be expected that this, was, this kind of thing was going to happen? I think we, we, we should have seen this coming. Uh, the security situation uh, has been getting worse uh, for a long time, and the Senate Council has over and over reported that, that the Taliban's are getting strength day by day. Local people are joining Taliban. Uh, and they're spreading all over the country, uh, not only in Kandahar or Helmand anymore. Uh, just uh, fo 40 minutes from Kabul city, uh, Maiwan Wardag is a province, uh, they have a presence there. Uh, so it's not uh, strange or, or we shouldn't be shocked that they have uh, attacked a prison and released hundreds of prisoners from uh, prison in Kandahar. And they're free now. And uh, to, to look at their situation, what they have been through in that prison, definitely they will join the Taliban and will be fighting against ISIL forces. And so there will be even more Taliban, there will in, be in more your view Taliban. anyway, more Taliban more fighters. Taliban fighters. So uh, one of the three reasons that we've been told we need these signature kind of programs and switching to reconstruction as well as fighting is to dissuade people from joining the Taliban. So when you see uh, this extra aid, uh, and it's pretty significant, $20 billion or so pledged, $600 million from Canada, and these three specific projects. Do you have any optimism this is going to change people's minds in Afghanistan? It's nice words and, and generous pledges will not restore the Afghanistan crisis. Only uh, three-fifths of aid pledged has been delivered, actually delivered to Afghanistan. Uh, and that, that has been delivered, but those are spent on projects that had little, little impact on the everyday lives of Afghan or imp improving their life situation. So if we have more money and we spend it on projects that will not bring any change in the regular Afghan's life, uh, that will not have a positive impact uh, on security or uh, situation in Afghanistan. So, but building a dam or immunizing school children and that kind of thing, doesn't that change uh, people's lives? Well, if you look at that sense, if you look in Kandahar, where people are uh, starving, where people don't have work, uh, where there are uh, refugees, uh, where there are IDPs, uh, internally displaced people from the current fightings, uh, where people can't feed their children, what do you expect? They, would they see a dam as, as a, a signature project? Uh, where people don't have access to basic health care, would you see a dam as a, as a um, signature project. Uh, so I think we have been calling uh, in, in Canada for, uh, for signature projects. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the projects that we have proposed was to take the Mirwais Hospital, which is the only hospital in Kandahar for, for people in Kandahar and for civilians who get injured in, in, in fighting between Taliban and ISIL forces. Uh, it, it has been a good move, but uh, I think uh, that they have chosen the wrong priorities. So in terms of uh, President Karzai as well, he said again in Paris, well, I'm going to work on cleaning up corruption. Do, do you think that there's any progress being made? Because 
you say the aid isn't getting there, but some of the aid that gets there probably doesn't get to where it's meant to be going either based on the corruption in the system. It's, it's on both sides, you know, how the international aid gets to Afghanistan, how it's spent uh, through international uh, aid organization and then to Afghanistan. Uh, so some of the money is lost over there. Uh, corruption, fighting corruption is a long-term uh, mm -hmm. fight that we, Karzai will be fighting for a long time to come, so we don't have to expect something in the near future. Well, there is going to be a president, presidential election next year. Do you think Karzai will still be president after that election? It's, looking at the current security situation, you know, uh, in, in, in Kandahar, in Helmand, in, in all over the south, in even some other provinces, uh, we will have an election. Mm -hmm. But not as many people will participate in this coming election as it was in the in the first election. Uh, so it would not be a very successful election if the situation stays like this. Very interesting. Thanks for your insight. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me.